You know those university bias response teams dedicated to rooting out microaggressions? Well, you might get in trouble for asking someone what language they speak, but apparently you can call a white guy a mayonnaise monster-looking ass. Check it out. Wake Forest University student Ryan Wolf dared to participate in a conservative panel at his school, and for that heinous crime, fellow students Julius Goebel and Char Van Schenk took the opportunity to Photoshop parts of his face onto crackers. Junior Brianna Reddick took it a step further, informing Wolf that he was a mayonnaise monster-looking ass, and literally delivering the saltiest Republican a box of saltine crackers at the actual panel. Now, Wolf wasn't triggered by these food comparisons. No, rather he said, I support the free speech rights of students, but in this case, I wanted to see if the school would enforce their rules surrounding verbal and abuse equally, regardless of who was involved in the case. I knew that similar rhetoric about the identity of other groups would not be tolerated. That's probably true. Remember the media firestorm when Perkita Burgess came forward about Bill O'Reilly's calling her a hot chocolate? The talk show host quit Fox News after that allegation and similar ones. Now, the student brought his case to Wake Forest's bias response team and said he wanted to start a judicial case against his abusers. You'd think he'd have a good case, too, since Wake Forest's code of conduct bans racial discrimination, and I don't think the students called him a cracker and mayonnaise because he looks scrumptious. But nope, the North Carolina school declined to press charges, with Dean of Students Adam Goldstein saying it would only make things worse for Wolf. Goldstein instead sent the students to an LGBTQ seminar. Just like UT Austin, Wake Forest must have mysteriously missed my request for comments when I first wrote this story. But it sure came to their attention after Drudge Report got a hold of it. Here's what the school had to say. Federal privacy laws prevent us from sharing information maintained in student records, including administrators' interactions with students. We can say that the narrative oversimplifies a complex situation that took place 16 months ago in the heat of a polarizing national election. We're total hypocrites who care about racial abuse of minorities, not whites, but hey, don't worry about it. It was complex a long time ago, and what did you expect during such a tense election? Seems like when it comes to true racial equality, Wake Forest could get a bit more woke. For Campus Unmasked, I'm Rob Shimshock. If you like this video and support our mission, please make sure to comment and subscribe. If something happens on your campus and you'd like us to investigate, send us details using the form on campusunmasked.com.